but it responds to different other situations. So Mary is one person and you are or me is another person. So in our own uniqueness, in our own situations, how can we take the, that very spirit in our own minds? That was the whole purpose of this retreat. So it's not like I have wasted the whole of the morning in telling you, no, that is another foundation. Without allowing the spirit to work and uh, act in that place wherever we are being put, you are losing one major foundation or the source of life. The source of life which Mary had, which has to be of yours as well. The great other two aspects of Mary is obedience and uh, humility or simplicity you can call. Obedience. I would like to give the shocking one first. I won't take the names, but there are two saints who said, I'll quote their words. Uh, there are two saints who said that Mary was so much, these are not their words, I'm just joining mine first until uh, I get their opening. Um, she was like following God's will all the time, obedient all the time. And um, this is how they, this is how they say, if Mary was asked, by those executioners, the crucifixion, those who were crucifying Jesus, if she was being asked to crucify Jesus, these two saints said she would have crucified Jesus herself. I can imagine this, but that is the obedience. That is what Abraham was willing to do. It was to fulfill that. That's why I said it is so shocking and so hard. It may not have happened. It would not have happened. But these two saints awaken us to that obedience of Mary. That that level of obedience so deep is uh, Abraham was ready to sacrifice his own son to obey the words of God. Mary could have crucified even Jesus if she was being asked. That is the extent she would have gone to obey God. And this, I, I wanted to put this, the harsh one first, it's more for us to know what type of lady this was. Not hard-hearted or harsh lady, but who was so uh, who was so faithful to God, no matter what was asked of her. So, she was obedient to God at that age, what I said at the past talks, oh, I don't need to ask uh, my mom, I don't need to ask my dad, I am the young, I am the handmaid, I am, what, what are the words? I am the handmaid of, thy, of the Lord, may it be done to me according to thy word. So who of us would be ready to suffer and die because she knew that the next step would be the stoning to death. Because pregnancy was not allowed without a marriage. See those risks involved. And for a long time I have been saying though that one thing, um, she never said to guardian angel, what about my husband? Are you going to speak with Joseph as well? Or you are just telling me? There is nothing of that nature. It is like, if this is what God is asking of me, He will take care. So I want you to take all of these aspects. This was a, like this uh, obedience and humility. I am running a lot, a lot back. It was supposed to be before your discussion as well, for the morning talks, like obedience and humility. So um, that is one, um, she obeyed the Roman emperor, undertook that long journey for the census. Imagine, in her ninth month, 
they calculate about 70 miles. How far that would be for you to drive by your car? And uh, she's going on a donkey, not on a road, in the hill country, maybe covering the mountain. In one of the movies which uh, you gave to me, it's like I must have said it uh, even for other times. Another donkey which was going in front of them collapses with splitting of the leg and falls. And the lady which was like on the donkey as well falls. It is like purposely given by the director to show the harshness of the road and harshness of the environment. And what Joseph says to Mary is the donkey was weak. So what he does next, the little bread that he had, he sends a blessing. This is out of my topic, in fact. He takes the bread, says the prayer, give half to Mary, and uh, uh, when she's not looking, half another three part of his share and hides it to give to the donkey. Yeah, to give to the donkey. And when Mary is sleeping, he goes and feeds the donkey so that Mary is, Mary is being taken safely. So uh, why I'm bringing these different things about that harsh journey of at ninth month, some of us would not even get out of a house now with all the comfort and with all the 911 calls that are available. But imagine that obedience to the emperor he had asked for a census. And there was, there was something amazing happening. God, maybe through the evil and crooked mind of the emperor and Caesar Augustus, wanted to call all these people to that place of Bethlehem. Because the scripture had to be fulfilled that the Son of God will be born in Bethlehem. Mary will not know this, like uh, it would not come, she is not like an educated a theologian, no, it's like all happening, that's where sometimes we feel uh, God, when God gets the things done, he kills five birds at the same time, not two birds. There are like everything, they, they, the different type of arrangement, I'm looking at the time at the same, uh, like I'm, I'm like, uh, yeah, so it is where Jesus says, when others says to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. And his word says, It would rather should have been, Blessed are they to hear the words. Which means, she kept the commandment. It is all interrelated. She was able to keep this. Uh, being the channel of the Holy Spirit in, to follow the in following the commandments of God. That is what we are going to reflect at Mass. So the commandments, the uh, rules and the laws of God, it makes you to really open up to God and the Holy Spirit. We may have a we may feel, oh I have been following all the commandments. No, it's like one, yes, check mark. Two, yes, check mark. No, that, that's the, just a check mark in your mind. But if you had a real check mark on your heart, the whole of Canada would have been converted by one person, not even 20 or 30 of you. One person is enough in the present world to transform and change the whole of Canada. If you truly love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with everything that you have. We cannot say those words of St. Paul which he says in the different uh, letters. How he is so much one with God. We are scared what they will do. Now the, the new law, maybe it has not come in Calgary, in Alberta, but Toronto, yes. No one can uh, what protest and say prayers before this abortion clinic. It is illegal. No one can confront, no one can uh, protest it, no. It's like you are silent and it's still called democracy because you get to vote. That's it, nothing else. 
So it's like uh, we need to understand all this. We are scared because I'm not ready. No, what are they going to do with me? How they are going to be after me? The moment I say this, the moment I stand for this. No, it's like we try to keep our one leg on this side, one leg on this that side. How how much should I protect myself? How much I have to give in to follow God's command? So it is where she followed every word of God. It is trust. Fulton Sheen said, perfection of one's life or of personality does not consist in knowing God's entire plan. It's not like, oh, we get these answers all the time. No, I don't know what is God's plan to me in my life. You will never know until maybe you are 105. Are you ready to fulfill what God has asked you today? No, but I need to know more. That more will be given tomorrow or next month. You just have to do one thing. That is what obedience is. It is doing as much as it is told to you. Not that I'm going to get, I have to have the entire picture, otherwise I cannot work, or I cannot do my work. If you're asking me to work, you have to tell me why and what will happen after and what will happen after, how this will take place. No, it's just I'm asking you to do this and that is done. That is the life of marriage obedience. Don't think that she understood everything. She just treasured all those things in her heart. Don't you know that I have to be in my father's house? She must have never understood it. But kept it in her heart. When she was walking this way, when she felt everything was ending, uh, it's like uh, God has said, this is, uh, this Messiah is going to rule the Davidic dynasty forever. And what is this now? It is like uh, uh, he is being put to death and is uh, laid in my arms. He is being buried now with the last station. And uh, which is, what is like Davidic dynasty? She has faith. God will let it down. Not that she must have known the entire Bible like a theologian or a scholar. No, this is what God has asked of me. So those are the different things that are put up on that paper for you to think what she must have felt when the dead body, completely gone, shattered, fully gone, finished, is put in my arms. It could be a test of Satan. See, I have told you, you are still trusting God. This is the dead body. Now what you can trust God for? And that, uh, that is going to be the test of Satan that we will get every now and then. Uh, what is up to the next one? So 3 to 335, 310, 320. Okay, I will cut short the time. I'm just I'm just adding one more thing. Just, just a minute. Uh, last point. Okay, maybe I'll solve your thing first before I go to the last point here. 